Salary caps in professional sports are always up for debate. Some believe they are necessary to create equality and make sure teams don't have an unfair edge over one another. And then there are those who believe that if you have the money to spend, spend it. I can see both ways, but I am more for seeing a salary cap in all sports. The term salary cap is used to define a league sanctioned payroll limit, which restricts the amount of money professional teams can spend on player salaries. And that's provided by SmallBusinessCrown.com. I will be discussing the advantages, disadvantages, and what leagues use salary caps. There are many advantages to having a salary cap. I believe the most important advantage is competitive balance. This forces owners to be more efficient and makes a more even playing field for all markets. It limits teams from getting all the superstars to come together and makes more teams strive to become more together and with just average talent. Another big advantage to salary cap is increased competition and media exposure. Maxwell Wallace on smallbusinesscron.com states, more competitive leagues draw higher TV audiences, costlier media contracts from TV networks, and more lucrative contracts from audiences. With that said, I truly believe uh, every bit of that statement, which everyone with one every on the same playing level field, it will make leagues and everything around it be more competitive. The last two advantages I would like to talk about are would keep owners from squandering money, and it might benefit small market teams. And that's provided by USAToday.com. There are a lot of owners out there with huge amounts of money and a lot of them in some cases spend too much on their team and aren't su successful and go bankrupt. With the salary cap, uh, it limits the owners from spending money unwisely and the cap also helps small organized teams have more even playing field with the bigger owners. There are many disadvantages to salary caps and many people don't know there are ways to pay athletes that don't count towards the salary cap. According to HowStuffWorks.com, signing bonuses don't count towards the team's cap for a given year. A player who receives a signing bonus gets more money for that year than his recorded salary, leaving more money in cap for other players. I personally believe that signing bonuses are okay to an extent but some of them get rather excessive. For example, uh, Len Perquelli of ESPN states, in 2004, NFL quarterback Peyton Manning uh, signed a seven-year, $99.2 million contract over seven years. And with that, he also got a $34.5 million sign-on bonus. That's a huge signing bonus that doesn't have to be recorded for uh, the cap, salary cap. I believe sign-on bonuses should be limited as well, or either they should be counted towards the salary cap. One of the biggest disadvantages to units in a salary cap is limiting the number of each elite players per team. To some of that is an advantage, but for the teams who don't have as much money, then it's, it's more fair. Another disadvantage to the salary cap is an unfortunate scenario of a lockout. A lockout occurs when the players and the owners uh, disagree on salaries, which usually the most main effect to that is the, the cap. There's a lockout right now going on in the NHL, and there was one two years ago in the NFL. Of the four major sports in the US, three of them have a salary cap. Football, basketball, and hockey all do. Baseball, the only one without one. Baseball is proof that not having a salary cap is very beneficial to the wealthier teams. According to usatoday.com, the New York Yankees payroll is $198 million, which is the highest in the MLB. The lowest, according to USA Today, is the San Diego Padres, which is around $55 million. The, 
which means New York, York Yankees have almost four times as much payroll, which is pretty unfair if you ask me. And it shows, too, the New York Yankees have won 27 World Series, which is the most out of any team. So do you think it's a coincidence that they have the biggest payroll and the most number of World Series wins? I think not. Here's a graph that shows the Yankees payroll to the, from the, compared to the other teams from over the years. According to businessinsider.com, the NFL first used a salary cap in 1994. Since 1994, the cap has risen 246.8%. Here's a graph that shows the incline of salary cap since 1994. According to InsideHoops.com, the NBA started a salary cap in 1984. In 1984, they started at a limit of 3.6 million, and now it's up to 58.044 million. Knowing all the numbers of the NFL and NBA, I truly believe both their leagues are a lot more fair than the MLB. It's really unfair when a guy off the New York Yankees team just makes $28 million a year alone. That right there is half of the San Diego's total payroll. In conclusion, I hope I have uh, persuaded you to how important the salary cap is needed in all sports. The advantages outnumber the disadvantages, and I've told you how the cap works in the NBA and NFL and how the NMLB needs it. I hope you now know how important it is and I hope you voice your opinion if you ever get the chance. And if you ever forget, just think about the New York Yankees and how money can buy you championships. And one simple solution to all that would be a salary cap.